have we all got a cuppa? Because we're probably going to need it for this astrology transit. Sit back guys, grab a cuppa and let's get into the deep of this transit and how to get the best out of it. Are we ready? A very warm welcome to Yildiz Readings 5D. For those of you that don't know, I'm a psychic medium. I cover astrology, soul coaching, twin flame path and more. I am live weekly, so please click the bell and subscribe. And if you do want more creative content like this, come and join the tribe. Now for the join button, the link is directly below or on the main page. You do get exclusive your eyes only content, twin flame coaching, pre-release content and the extension reads. Without further ado, let's get into the video and I'll see you every Friday. Take care guys. Now the five must knows linked to this new moon is that A, this is a masculine energy. Now masculine energy is that of what we do and how we show up in the world and it is in the house of cancer. So it's both our intuition and logic and our direct action. The second one is being a new start, it's a new moon. Um, it's in with, out with the old, in with the new. So it can have, feel like it has two polarities going on. So, you know, be gentle to yourself during the time of having this new moon initiation. Give it a couple of days either side, but definitely there's going to be a lot of clarity as to where that new start's going to be. And yes, we will connect in to it within your zodiac sign. Three, yes, we can be doing some shadow work. We also do need to look at getting into yin yang. So although I said it is masculine energy, we need both the action and the intuition to apply it. And four, yes, it is a number 11. Because it's occurring on the 11th, we are looking at it being a um, angel number 11. So this really connects to hard work, creativity uniquely we are in the energy of cancer which is co-creative energy it's solar plexus as well as intuition so you can have some activations coming through with your third eye as well as your solar plexus and sacral chakra sacral chakra due to the fact you're going to need the energy to launch it might not happen directly on that day like i said give it a few days say the side moon energy is really transit over but it is springing to action a lot of us are really getting into light body experience so we can get into the yin yang so 11 is goals kindness sensitivity loyalty adaptability to change and five we do need to look at the shadow sign of where it's coming from and the, the shadow sign of what we left was the full moon in Capricorn. And Cancer and Capricorn are shadow signs to each other. So as I mentioned, the yin to the yang, uh, taking that direct foundation, really logically looking at life and saying, okay, with the foundation, how do I need to adjust? Where is my safety, my nurture, my sustenance? How do I fill my own cup as well as where am I placing my energy in a very structured way um, in a creative sense, both to my relationships, my con connections and work. So what, where, why, how, and what steps we need to take. Okay, now we do have the day of the moon. Let's have a look at such. Now, number one, we will have the shadow of Mercury shifting and going MIA. Thank God, are we not happy? We can then with those Gemini placements, both cognitively, physically, start applying those energies and moving forward. And it will really enhance this new moon in Cancer because it's going to enter Cancer. So we're going to have Cancer in Mercury and the moon playing out at the same time. So the tension points relating to our actions, our thoughts, our words and the steps we were taking, that resistance can really let up a little bit. But there will be circumstances with the T-squares between Mars and Leo, Saturn and Aquarius, which is retrograde, and Uranus and Taurus, where it's bringing about this action that we're needing to actually do something. Now, with Uranus and Taurus, what it will bring is ingenuity. And it can be a little bit like after the rubble, you could look at it like Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and, you know, the rubble's there. It's what we're going to do with that in a foundation sense, Capricorn, to restructure our lives and there will be solutions to these problems. We can tell ourselves in our own personal lives at the moment, 
um, we can move into victim consciousness it's a new moon which is a beautiful energy but the revelations are required in order to find solutions to these problems and yes because it's in an energy of masculine nature we will have the physical strength to actually go right we need to apply these changes it will become more practical as we move to mid-month but during this time um, there can be tension points there can be uh, revelations downloads hopes and dreams and launches of new situations now a great date for a launch would be on the 12th especially if it does relate to businesses it can bode quite well and especially because we do have Uranus and Taurus depending on the industry you're in be it your blogging journaling using technology or creative energy and science um, this can be a very grand time to be really launching these energies but we will look at your zodiac signs to break it down and show you how those energies can be playing out the other um, reality is the, sh the shadow sign of Capricorn we did just have last month it does take for it to transit the whole cycle around the zodiacs 248 years okay so the full cycle will be in this new one it will end on 2023 we are also at the midpoint through its retrograde so we're sort of feeling like have we learned do we understand it's in the house of capricorn we had the full moon in capricorn um we did have saturn in the house of capricorn as well and it's now an aquarius it's retrograde at the moment which they both do link to the same polarity but that it's energy shifting at the moment so the shadow sign of capricorn what i'm trying to say is it's hard it's a tension point it's frustrating um any rebirth is frustrating but it will serve us in the long run we may have resistance but it can be the circumstances that are causing resistance as we move to the new moon we have an opportunity to recreate and restructure to have more success we will get into your zodiac signs to see how each of these energies can be playing out and i'll break it down for you if you do want a personal reading you can join me the link is directly below otherwise into your energies very warm welcome cancer now we're going to have a look at your zodiac sign to pre-warn you and forearm you and for those of you celebrating a birthday at this time a very happy birthday now with this moon it is going to be landing in your first house now first house is very personal you naturally are cancer so it is going to feel quite natural however because it's happening in your first house placement it's happening to you and for you so what do i mean by that number one spiritually you can be changing also the axis of cancer is capricorn so we did just have the full moon in capricorn which was really linking to your relationship sector it's how your relationships and your contracts directly have impacted you in the past past tense letting it go and with those areas how now can you transform it within your own power so you may be looking at what to let go of how to restructure this can link to various areas and although it is the first and the seventh house also at an emotional level it can be you using your energy to co-create a new beginning where do you want to go what do you want to achieve what are your hopes dreams and aspirations how are you showing up to make some of those things happen these will be the questions now if there has been difficulty during mercury retrograde as i mentioned yes mercury is shifting on the day of the moon and it is shifting over to cancer you will be able to react and deal and think more effectively it's moving away from your 12th house of discovery and into the full form of reality through your emotions and through your actions you're going to directly take so what will benefit you moving forward number one your allies relating to the 11th house can come in really handy and tapping into those resources it might be your boss and people you know um, really networking and developing those areas are going to enhance and you may also be looking at taxation legacies inheritances what you stand for what you directly can depend on and really sorting those things out to take the next step in your life and i really do feel for you guys you're making major plans and leaps forward so a very um 
bold good luck, especially for this month. And you definitely will start feeling more logical by mid month, but we'll check in yet again with you. Hi, beautiful Scorpio. Now this new moon in cancer is occurring in your ninth house. Now ninth house can be to do with your spirituality. It can be to do with travel. It can be to do with education, upskilling. Um, and really looking at where you're going in life, directional energy, the long-term view. This might have from a foundation level of what you could and couldn't do, potentially even due to what's happening in the collective, might have hindered you. Um, and I really feel during this time, you've had a lot of time to reflect and a lot of time to look at what you're tackling and how to tackle it more effectively. Uh, tension points may have come through in your contracts, which they can start easing up as we move forward. But Uranus and Taurus squaring Saturn and Aquarius, which did occur, the first point was on the 17th of February. June 14th, we had another, and the last one is occurring this year, December the 24th. So look back to those dates. Some of those things might have caused tension, linking to love, um, your contracts, your friendship groups, uh, your ability to provide for yourself. These things are shifting about. And as Mercury shifts signs, there will be less tension in intimacy within your connections, in understanding and secrets and um, really creating that strong foundation. You might have felt a little bit, um, you know, internalizing things, so to speak, one can say. Uh, but really looking for those solutions, but maybe not ultimately finding um, the stability inside of those things right away. Now, some of this can link to your career. We do currently have Mars in Leo, which does connect to your career field, how you're showing up, the work you're doing in your life, and how it can be balanced. You may find that if you are wanting to transition through, the new moon in Cancer can activate it, especially if you don't see yourself going the same way as these particular individuals, it may push you into a new beginning. Now, yes, these opportunities can land in your lap, but it's what you're gonna do with it. Even a revelation as per se of this is not working for me, um, I really do see these things shifting about. Now, you will, from a practical point of view, be able to network in advance. And if you are wanting to launch anything, you will find the 12th does bode quite well. I do feel at this time, you may find sudden revelations and solutions to long-standing problems or blockages. So trust the process, see how it plays out for you, but definitely there can be major plans forged and you could directly be communicating to individuals and taking the direct steps. Oh, beautiful Pisces. Now, if you did have tension surrounding your routine, your ability to move about home, family, it should start easing up as we do hit the new moon in Cancer because we also are having Mercury, as I mentioned, transition out of Gemini and into the house of cancer. So cancer for you does link to your fifth house placement. There may be solutions relating to co-creative endeavors. Again, as I mentioned, launching projects can be really good during this time, um, especially on the 12th, but you may find also your ability to enjoy things as well as nurturing, um, birthing of children, as well as um, siblings getting on children and solutions in those areas shall come. I also feel with your 11th house, the full moon in Capricorn, which I did mention being the shadow sign, situations relating to your aspirations in life you know what you're doing what your purpose is how the bigger picture can come together this can be group endeavors if you're working within an employment sector that is tribe orientated you know how are they all merging together what needs to go what is coming if it's a family related dynamic what is and what isn't working and acceptance of the past there can be a great deal of healing here and a great deal deal of fulfillment on its way. As we do move forward, it's really important to look after your health. Don't overdo things, especially if there is stress areas because you do have Leo in the sixth house. So look after your diet, look after your health and well-being, mind, body and soul awareness this month. 
Okay, Aries, let's have a look at your zodiac sign of how this new moon in Cancer shall be transforming your life. Now, it does connect to your fourth house. Fourth house can be your daily routine. It can be family, home, a brand new home, moving off home, transforming, potentially um, changes and new beginnings occurring, especially when it does come to family. Now, for some of you, the full moon in Capricorn may have been the work you were putting into things and maybe to no avail seeing change. And that is coming to, to an end. We did have the full moon and the shadow sign of Cancer is Capricorn. So both polarities are being brought into balance so you can have a brand new foundation, but also an environment that is conducive for you. So if it is a work-related dynamic that is changing in your life, you may be seeking new ways to do things in a healthier way, in a healthier environment with a brand new beginning. If it is a project you're launching, as I mentioned, the 12th is a very good day, as well as new beginnings and setting our intentions before, moving into it and then awaiting those results, but taking the direct action. Now with Mercury retrograde, it was in shadow till the new moon. We did have the shadow phase and we also do have it trans transitioning over to your fourth house. So um, you may have found that achieving some of those things was difficult. Maybe you had way too much on your plate and you know, I really call it like a circus act. That's how it directly feels. This can ease up at this time. And as we move towards mid month and beyond, you can really be looking at how it was affecting your health, your well-being, what you can do to transform those things. And it can be a time where you really investigate further your psychology, um, surrounding circumstances, but healthy boundaries as well. This can be a very good time for health and well-being. And it's really my mantra for this month is mind, body and soul, really getting it anchored in and getting into yin and yang. Now, if you really didn't know what you were going to do moving forward, you may find by about the 28th, it makes even more sense. So if you do feel at the moment with Jupiter and Pisces, um, that you're really planning and trying to discover and understand what your purpose is moving forward, you can find after that revelation occurs, it, it's the need to directly take that action. And if we don't, as we do move towards the 28th, it can feel quite heavy by nature. So please do trust your instincts, trust your intuition, and you know, let it lead your way. Oh, Leos, how are you doing, my beautifuls? Yes, although we have had Mars and Leo, I can say with Mercury retrograde, it has been very difficult for you guys. Also because we do have Jupiter where it transited into the house of Pisces for you. It's your eighth house placement. You were really questioning, you know, what are people's intentions? Um, where is the stability in this foundation? Capricorn can directly relate to it. How is your health maybe um, you know, sixth house can be two ways. It can be, how are we showing up? How can we, it's the house of hidden enemies. So in a circumstance, let's break it down. If this relates to love, it's what can I do on my side of the fence? And what am I basing this circumstance on? What, where is my circle of concern and my control? And where is it with others? What is the foundation of such? What can I do to transform and change this? And as we move to the new moon, you may be really meditating upon this and revelations and things that are hidden from you may come up as a solution. Also, if this does link to your employment, really, you know, making those sacrifices to make those hopes and dreams come true and knowing that the sacrifices you're making right now, it's one step in the right direction. Uh, some of the resistance may have been, as I mentioned, due to Mercury retrograde. It was extremely difficult on our nervous system. We may have felt we had no hope. We may have felt that we had no support, um, as well as our concentration physically wasn't there. So fatigued body, fatigued mind, uh, doesn't make for a great day. This should ease up and you can have more clarity about how to move forward. So concentration, professional resources can start soothing. Um, 
but the tension points were potentially by what you could do, your ability to do such, but also your mind and healthy boundaries. So as you actually take the step in the right direction, know that your success is coming and relationships can balance back. But anything that you feel shouldn't be there, be it it's a connection, be it it's an unhealthy boundary with a person, place or thing, really assess it in the bigger picture of your life because by the 28th, when we do have Jupiter moving back into Aquarius, it can become a little bit burdensome. So, you know, there's no I in team, so to speak. How are you doing, beautiful Sagittarius? Now, I do have my heart and love for you guys. I have been through a transit very similar to what you guys are going through, but believe me, you are really going to be grateful for it. But it's always in the after fact, okay? Now, we did just move through the eclipses both in Gemini and Sagittarius. And the tension points at the moment in the shadow phase of Mercury um, has been putting a lot of pressure in your contract and relationship sector. That should ease up because we are having the new moon in Cancer, which is deepening the intimacy within your connections. I do feel for those of you, if you are in a relationship, the intimacy and the foundation and the healthy, it's a healthy house of codependency. It can be anything to do with inheritances, tax, debt, deep intimacy, stability, that of what we can depend on. It's really creating that solid foundation. I feel many of you can have that new beginning and really turning over a new leaf. Now, uh, you might have had bugbears really linking to home and family. There may be a transition occurring in that department, uh, especially by about the 28th. So keep an eye on that. Now, as I mentioned, the tension point can come off your relationship sector. This also could be a time when you do have people from the past coming back, but it is really drawing a line in the sand. Now, if this is linking with the Cancer Moon into your career sector. It is asking you to look at where you were going from Capricorn and you know, you could really be looking at your professional resources, what you physically have, what you want, what you had, um, what you've lost, but what you're wanting to gain and what steps you're gonna have to make. So I do feel, again, really drawing a line in the sand, this could have been a towel moment you received. It might've been a change in economic status. That can be going up or going down, especially with Uranus and Taurus. Now, sometimes it doesn't have to be that we've done anything wrong. It can be, okay, the road to least resistance. So it's a little bit like business management. We're trying things, they're not working. We don't quite understand why. And suddenly we can have a revelation and a change. I do feel, number one, there is a massive amount of growth for you. Um, and this can be going up a tier level, owning your power, allowing the transformation and really choosing a path that resonates more so with you in that creative area. But a major decision being forged and deep changes happening. Hi, beautiful Taurus. Gee, how are you guys doing? Please do write in the comments and tell me. Now, number one, some of you can feel extremely tired. Uh, you may feel uh, really vivacious in uh, you know the next few days, but you can potentially feel a little bit emotionally exhausted. It is because Uranus and Taurus is in your zodiac sign or connected to your zodiac sign rather. And this can be affecting our nervous system. So, you know, really protect uh, your aura and your nervous system by eating healthy. The new moon in Cancer is happening in your third house and you can be very, very vocal and be creating healthy boundaries and taking the direct steps to that new beginning for your life. But it can be emotional moving into it. Be grounded, deal with it in the way that it comes through, especially when it does come to your beliefs. You can be really roaring like a tiger. Um, home may have been a point of tension, especially if there were disputes, especially if it was accommodation related and you were trying to sort something or did need to move due to circumstances. It should start easing up, but the, at the moment there still may be tension surrounding it. As we do move to uh, the mid-month point, do be careful, you do have fertility aspects there. So if it's something you're not wanting, practice safety. I also feel big, big revelations um, surrounding what your purpose is in life. So for some of you, this can be a transitional phase. And maybe you're looking at your career sector, you're looking at your purpose in life. 
Um, it can feel a little bit like an existential crisis, but it can ease up. Now, by the time we do have the wounded healer taking its hero's journey in retrograde, you may find during this time, it can be a very deeply transformative spiritual time for you. And you may find some revelations as to why certain things have been blocking you, what your ideals are, and what, you know, your, your new spiritual compasses, especially with both the Eclipse in Sagittarius and in Gemini. Um, this was really your self-esteem. It was your net worth, the money that you had at your disposition. And it's also the deeper intimacy within connections and especially in the frustration of is it changing you know sometimes we can really feel we can't see it but it happens on the internal before it happens on the external so please trust the process do you want the good news capricorn okay capricorn now yes it has been extremely hard number one we are officially at the halfway mark of pluto retrograde and currently pluto is in your first house in the zodiac sign Capricorn so it can be affecting you um, both on your nervous system you can be taking it extremely personal you may be outgrowing circumstances all very natural make sure you do balance your base chakra okay because it is very foundational you need to keep quite grounded and look after your nervous system also with the shadow sign of capricorn it's cancer so you versus your connections and it can be a brand new beginning but you may have a revelation as to you have changed and that's okay too capricorn so yes this can usher in brand new beginnings in your love life in the clothing you like the hair you have um you know just you point blank zero it's time for you but linking to these things what you like and what you dislike can change this also can bring back people from the past but it will need to be in a brand new fashion okay i do feel many of you can have um wounds relating to intimacy you may be battling it so to speak of opening up and you might want to keep your deepest darkest emotions hidden even though you could be really battling them and it might be where you're needing to let go needing to be passionate and loving but you could be quite passionate and loving at the moment some of you could be really looking at the bigger picture what your values are versus another person's um do they match are we of the same polarity does it matter uh you know are we taking this connection to the next level it could be upskilling education a lot is happening in your life capricorn but trust the process it's all divinely guided the eclipse is also from a spiritual point of view if you were needing to balance your crown chakra it is because you did have the eclipse sagittarius in your 12th house so you'll have great ideas how to grow and how to transform and where life is going you'll be deeply intuitive uh, but you do need to trust the process now as to income and your professional resources between now and the 28th it can increase but really important to tap into your spirituality, be authentic and be the version of you you are. Emotional eating can come up at this time or pacifies due to the fact that Jupiter and Pisces is transiting your third house. So pay close attention. And when it does come to home and family, some healing can be coming through this month for it. Just understand that you are loved, that you are wonderful, you are safe and you are grounded and you have what you're made of. There you go. It's going to get better. Oh, trust me, it's going to get better. Now let's have a look at your chart. There was a lot of tension last month. We did have both eclipses and we also had the full moon in Capricorn and really um, connecting in with your co-creative endeavors. Um, maybe even you work in all the changes you had to make. Uh, you might have felt as though there was a lot you had to let go of. A lot you had to let go of, a lot you had to change, maybe balancing family, work and home. Um, there was tension points. It should ease up now as we move towards the new moon in Cancer. Now, Mercury was affecting your 10th house, which was your communication style, your movement, your actions, frustrations work anything you were doing it felt like you were a circus act you were really juggling and psychologically it may have really been affecting you 
I also feel if you have been working incredibly hard, you can be getting the benefits now as we move forward. And with this new moon in Cancer, it does connect into your 11th house. Um, this is where money is made of. This is also a great moment to have a revelation of how to do such, but also in an emotional value system. It's, you know, how we provide, what we can do, what our hopes and dreams and aspirations are. And it is for the bigger picture and the bigger group. Now, yes, all the changes you're making are for the future. This is both in your love domain, how you are directly transforming, be it you're coupled or singled, um, and also where you see yourself going. So there can be big revelations. Now, this can be playing out two ways. Number one, we do have Jupiter this month transiting and dipping back into the house of Aquarius. So you may really be looking at, you know, what your part is in situations versus others. Um, creating healthy boundaries, um, also how circumstances of groups can be impacting your emotions. But a lot of how it's changing is the way you are looking at it, you are balancing the scales and saying, hey, where is this going? What is my spiritual calling? What is my deeper truth? How do we create peace in this domain? Be it it's love or career or your friendship groups, there's a transformation, but you're being very intentional, Virgo. Um, and I'm super excited to experience this Virgo energy this month. So, you know, shout out to all you beautiful Virgos. I can't wait to have the logic, practical, um, map based energy coming through. That's what I'm looking forward to. So I hope you enjoy that energy and I really wish you the very best of success. Now, during this month, you could have emotions relating to deeper intimacy, um, coming up and that's as Aries travels retrograde. I also feel your money and income can increase, but there's a lot of upskilling. Some of you might be doing short courses, but the overall screaming energy that's coming through is that what you're doing does have a purpose. You know, please don't tell yourself that all the sacrifices you're making is for nothing. It's not. You're going to find practical ways to approach it in all facets and please trust the process. Hi, beautiful Libra. No, I haven't forgotten you. Much love to all of my Libra patrons. Now, let's have a look at your chart. <sighs> I can say for a lot of you, you may have had a lot of ascension symptoms. You might have been dealing with your health and trying to get grounded and sleeping potentially may have been difficult. Uh, the axis of Gemini that we had with the eclipse was hitting your ninth house. Now, ninth house can be um, religion, education, foreign countries, travel and purpose, and maybe potentially from a spiritual point of view, you were questioning those things and having way too much going on, not really seeing the hay for the clouds. Now the full moon in Capricorn, that is the axis of cancer that we had was hitting your fourth house. And yet again, a lot really changing and shifting and maybe not feeling so stable at home or within your environment and your surroundings. So very much base chakra and very emotional as such. Um, really from a career point of view, be it you were working at home, I do feel there can be changes and shifts, uh, especially say for instance, if you were having an investment property, um, you know, trying to juggle those things, having repairs. And the beautiful thing is we're halfway through Pluto and Capricorn retrograde. So those areas of tension points, we've reached the halfway point, yay. Uh, we're almost completed with this one particular transition. Um, and as it moves direct, it'll ease off. But the beautiful energy is we have a brand new beginning in what you're gonna do. And you can really have this direct sense of your purpose, what you can do to solve situations, and it will be a light bulb moment. This can also enhance your career sector. And with your 11th house placed, although, you know, Mars and Leo is very vivacious in nature, having the 11th house placement, which is the location of richness, what to do to bring that financial abundance about might have been complicated due to the shadow energy of Mercury retrograde, but it will enhance it now and you'll be able to take the steps to have your purpose and know your direction and network effectively to make that happen. I also feel your communication sense will be transforming and changing and you'll be able to mix and merge with other people. It could be a very good time for teaching and upskilling as well as you can really be trying to effectively fix your foundation of what you directly can depend on um, 
and maybe some things that were hidden from you can come to light but it is going to be a positive thing not a negative i do feel by shifting um, some situations about your health can be picking up as well as your sleeping energy can come through but you might find with all that mercury energy we're going to have um, a lot of virgo aspects towards mid-month this can be a time when you can have revelations and light bulb moments especially as aries in chiron moves retrograde you may be very reflective of your relationships the things you like and what you're doing and, and maybe the reasons why and this can bring a lot of solutions and a lot of healing now if you were wondering if there was something wrong with you and you were having normal checkups and things like that this is a time when you can find those things and it may be sensitivity to food or something to that degree but trust the process nevertheless and you can have a brand new beginning in finding solutions and last but not least yes this can be an opportunity to heal connections and people from the past coming back hi beautiful aquarius let's have a look at your zodiac sign now yes we do have Saturn retrograde so you can be really reflective of what your purpose is um Saturn can actually link to father energy but again you would need to look at your um, natal zodiac sign to look but it can be really subjects relating to father and reflective energy I also feel you within your own life about where you're going and what your responsibility is you could be looking at that and your conditioning but also where you are showing up and how to change things I do feel with this new moon in cancer you'll have a revelation as to what you want to do how you want to change and what you want to create I also feel you'll find unique ways and discoveries of how you can transform the way you connect in with your employment your love life and more and what those areas are but I do feel great healing now Capricorn has always been for your zodiac sign a little bit challenging now it does have such a large transit um, so for those of you in a younger generation you'll be deeply grateful uh, but this is very educational for you nevertheless and it's really helping you create a foundation in your life but looking at the psychology surrounding it and then directly implementing it now we do have Pluto meeting its halfway point at the moment of its retrograde cycle and great discoveries can be achieved during this time and that will be okay what is the solution to this problem how can I directly apply it what is my reality what's my paradigm how am I viewing you know these choices these things playing out in my life and, and how can I change it now by my direct action inside it by the steps how can I break this down it's a little bit like going to school and having a 101 and having a revelation and going oh heck I didn't say that and I do feel a lot of breakthroughs for you um, and this can really pivot and move you forward psychologically physically and spiritually now if there has been tension points at home or relating to home and value systems this again can shift especially if you're wanting more for yourself and the, you know I don't really find your zodiac sign to be governed by finances as per se it's more values but especially if there was lack um, and there's been uncertainty again I do find you finding creative ways to do such now if you weren't able to get out and about you can find that this can shift if it hasn't already and you will have more time to be able to enjoy it with kin um, with loved ones with socialization as mercury moves out of gemini and into the house of cancer but again you'll be able to catch up on those tasks get those things done um, and really shift things about but I am feeling that a lot of you are wanting to have a lighter mode now connections for you guys if it was a little bit tense it should start easing up we do have Mars and Leo at the moment it can be hot and heavy so um, super cautious with that but you will be looking at how you can build a for your career your foundation B if you're studying um, things will make sense and you'll have more purpose in the next few weeks and the transformations of those areas can come through I also feel if you've had revelations relating to how to increase your net worth you have between now and the 28th of July to implement them otherwise your next window will be 2022 for that domain now by no means do I mean doom and gloom what I do mean is if you've had a revelation and you can start making the steps in particular areas of your life that is going to increase a your self-esteem be your financial position 
and it's actually really shouting at you like you need to, um, whatever steps you do feel psychologically and logically there is that you need to um, make, start taking little steps. It'll be easier to kind of implement them now, even if it's a plan for 2022, um, then leaving it till the last hour. As it shifts back, Jupiter will transit back into Aquarius. Um, there's going to be more responsibilities on your hands. So if you do find we've got that little window to go, oh, okay, revelation, let's get that done. Do such. Otherwise, please do book a private reading and I'll give you a hand. Hi, beautiful Gemini. Yes, I hear you. It hasn't been easy. Now, yes, for a lot of you, some of you may have been experiencing headaches, I'll just say. Some of you may have felt like you had a million and one things coming at you. You were a circus act and you were juggling, but it wasn't a great circus. Um, and I'm not saying that you didn't put the best of intentions in to make it such. It just looked like a hellhole. Let's put it that way. It is going to settle down. Um, this might have been wounds relating to how people look at you, what you're doing, how much people place expectations, what you can and can't achieve, how you feel, but a lot of psychoanalytical energy. And it may have directly affected your auric system. Um, I do feel some of you, if you've been really trying hard to, you know, change circumstances in your life, it might have been a one-sided coin. And what do I mean by that? When you do have a transit of the first and the seventh house, um, you may have been really doing some shadow work, looking at what your part was in a circumstance and what another's part was, where it was going, if it was going to grow and transform, and if it wasn't, what your values are, potentially connected to marriage, connections, contracts, friendship groups, but it will balance out. So that was the eclipse alone. Um, but we did have the shadow face of Mercury in Gemini. So although you are a Mercury orientated sign, it still directly would have transformed you. It is occurring in your first house and we do currently have the North Node there. So for you, the last moon we had prior to this beautiful new moon in Cancer was in the house of Capricorn in your eighth house. So um, this could be trust issues coming up. It might have been secrets and hidden situations. Um, emotions relating to letting things go. And this could have been, you know, hurtful words, um, things that you directly depended on, people that you directly depended on. Um, and, and maybe even people being dependent on you, but there's this really, really emotionally um, transformations and changes happening in that domain. And it also might have been hurt relating to a past over loved one for some of you. Now, I do see with this new moon in Cancer, your self-esteem and emotions can be increasing. And, and it may be for the next three weeks that you don't really want to be super serious, that you do really want to... Um, really upgrade and integrate and you know get everything in order so to speak so i'm not necessarily saying it's not a romantic month it's going to become very practical i do feel you may be looking at your home this month as well and changing it but taking a practical view on your daily routine um, your love life and how things are going i also do feel that you're going to have a really logical way to increase your income as well as looking at the fact that you are the beautiful cup and you are worth it. Take care, beautiful dolls. Come and join us for the transit aspects. And I will see you throughout the month for your romance read, your twin flame updates and more. Now we are going to be looking at the new moon in Cancer at 18 degrees on the 10th of July 2021. Now this is the shadow sign of Capricorn that we had last month and this is making a conversation piece which we will go into in this video. But moreover we do need to look at the other aspects surrounding it. Now your energy source at the moment, you could potentially up until the 22nd feel a little bit emotional. So it's a really good time to be looking after your foundation, looking after your well-being, your body, mind and soul, especially with Jupiter retrograde in Pisces. Now the sun in cancer can bring these things up and it also can be in relation to feeling um, that we need to be there for a lot of people and having some burdens and responsibilities. The sun enters Leo on the 22nd of July so you can feel more vivacious and energy 
and you more you'll have more energy so to speak so it will be a bit more vibrant than what we've experienced of late mars is in the house of leo and that's until the 28th of july where it transits over into virgo now virgo is the analytical science we'll have a lot of energy to put into the devil in the detail and getting things done uh, we can be perfectionists so be super careful with that aspect but it can be really well applied if we're placing it into our own personal lives now mars currently in the placement of leo can be our financial resources it can give us a lot more vivacious energy we do need to be careful of ego but it does give us the oomph to get things done venus currently is in the house of cancer so again we can feel emotional we can accidentally be feeling we need to nurture but we really need to be loving ourselves and especially if we give that love and attention to our contracts our employment and our loved ones um, it can really enhance things and it's it's again connecting in with people that matter connecting into things that need um, you know nurturing that can be our creative projects as well as with ourselves as it moves into the house of Virgo on the 22nd of July uh, we can be nitpicky we can be more practical but it, there can be this energy of perfectionism but when it does come to contracts this can be a very beautiful aspect where we can get things done get it on an even keel and get that foundation correct it's also health related so important to look after health and nutrition and diet mercury is direct thank goodness for that wasn't that hectic but with it still being in the house of gemini until the 11th um, we can be very very busy and very active especially with mars and leo mercury will enter cancer on july the 11th so from that placement again your thoughts your actions will be towards your creative projects towards nurturing things to moving them into fruition but balancing yourself so be careful of your speech and your thoughts um, especially because we do have mars in the house of uh, leo until the 28th now the must knows astrologically as we do know Saturn and Aquarius the Lord of restriction is still retrograde until October the 11th so any Aquarian placements keep an eye on your chart or do come and join us for the information coming through in this video now also the full moon in Capricorn was really hitting that Pluto axis so a lot of things to do with our career really is um, getting that foundation recorrected and we have entered into this new kind of um, portal so to speak of really correcting those areas in society in our own particular lives and re-navigating it forward and this cancer moon is really the shadow aspect of it so we're having to really deal with both polarities both with our emotions and our foundation and how we can balance both out now it goes direct october the 6th so great changes a real great time to really implement those things during the retrograde now as neptune went retrograde last month which occurred on on the 25th we may have gained some real clarity clarity relating to again the Pisces placement but also what we need to shift about to create that balance spiritually now Pisces is very 12th house placement and with both Jupiter and Neptune in the house of Pisces which is 12th house it can be the house of the hidden very very spiritual energy it can be the house of imprisonment and incarceration um, we're really needing to look after ourselves and this can be psychology emotions vices uh, but also quality systems really you know dig through that closet um, dump, the junk, dump the junk so to speak or it's giving us revelations and I feel a lot of us by about the 25th when Neptune went retrograde we might have had an aha moment and you know don't get cross at yourself if you haven't had it just yet during this retrograde between now and it going direct December the 1st we will have um, really cemented ideas on how to make some of these dreams come true Jupiter is going to be in the house for the whole year next year so it's really important to look at anything that isn't really working with us both at an emotional physical or psychological level so we can correct it and be prepared for 2022 Lilith enters Gemini on the 18th of July so that shall be very interesting stay tuned now in this section I'm gonna keep you in the loop in relation to both July and August so we do have next up after this new moon in Cancer which is gonna be a brand new beginning 
um, can feel a little bit uh, scary and exciting all at the same time. We are going to be having the full moon in Aquarius at one degree, which is the critical degree point on the 24th of July. There is going to be another Aquarian moon and it is very uh, much linked to the collective energy the, uh, for the age of Aquarius as well as Saturn retrograde. So pay attention to that. Then we're having the new moon in Leo. Uh, in August, it's 16 degrees on the 8th. Um, Aries in Chiron is set to go retrograde. So if you do want to join the webinar for that and the support, come through to the website and join. Otherwise, we'll enter these in the details. Now, above, we do have the important dates, but the one thing to be mindful of is Jupiter will move on the 28th back into Aquarius. So as I pre-warned you, uh, we do have transits occurring there between Pisces and then dipping back into Aquarius. We also have Lilith entering Gemini. So as we did have Mercury retrograde and as super excited as we are, we may need to face our shadows to do with our actions, our words and our thoughts changes. Thanks for joining me guys. I trust that you enjoyed the content. Thank you so very much for all your comments, your likes, your feedback. It gives me insight into how this content is linking to you. If you do wish to book a reading, you can go to the link directly below. Otherwise I am live regularly on YouTube. Click the bell to get the notification because as we go live, unless you see the notifications, um, you don't get notifications of lives. I send them through the community chat. Love and light and I'll see you for the twin flame and romance updates.